सो हेलो वेलकम टू लेट्स लर्न आई एम सलमान वाडकर एंड आई विल बी टेकिंग मॉक इंटरव्यू ऑफ अब्दुल कादिर सैयद अब्दुल कादिर राइट यस ओके सो लेट्स स्टार्ट सो इंट्रोड्यूस योर सेल्फ अब्दुल माई सेल्फ सैयद अब्दुल कादिर आई लिव इन गुलबर्गा कर्नाटका I've done my education. I've recently passed out uh, in BE Mechanical from Khaji Bandhana Wasi University, and I've done my intermediate or PUC from Chandragaon Patil Memorial PU College, and I've done my schooling from Ikra National English Medium School, Gulbarga. Uh, talking about my family, I have three younger brothers. My father is a worker, and one brother she is a housewife. Talking about my hobbies, I love to play cricket, watching cricket and football. and talking about my strength i uh, i love to be hard working being honest trustworthy my weaknesses are i am slightly weak in vocabulary in, in english but i am practicing now and learning more new things that's all for my introduction okay so like uh, you told about uh, your introduction was okay nice uh, then in which year did you pass in 2023 recently in 2023 okay okay and uh, like uh, this thing your uh, this thing in weaknesses so you told that you are working on it how you are working on it yeah i am recently uh, like reading about uh, vocabulary uh, for improving my vocabulary i am reading like uh, uh, readers from my uh, past that i have collected some books for reading so that's i am learning how like english in uh, uh improving my vocabulary okay so you are reading no- novels or something like that yeah not novels particularly but there are some like readers for english okay readers like like uh, 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 from my uh, brother there are some readers for english subjects so i am trying to learn i am trying to search the new words vocabularies to improve my english I didn't understand. What do you mean by readers? Do you mean dictionary or something like that? Yeah, dictionary also, but uh, some like uh, uh, readers for English subjects. Okay. Okay. And uh, what about uh, like you told that you you are a person who likes to play sports and all. Like you want to you like to play cricket, football and all. Yeah. so like um, when you join merchant navy so there maybe you will not be able to get, get to do these things so will it be okay with you how will you cope up with that yeah definitely yeah definitely it will be okay for me because uh, for something i need to sacrifice is not just like that i am completely in the cricket profession so it's uh, for joining merchant navy it's my dream to join merchant navy but about, about the sports part it's a different for uh, maintaining my fitness and health so i will definitely uh, uh give some time for this also but not completely uh, to the sports itself okay so here you can also say that uh, there are gym gyms and facilities on board ship yeah, so yeah. basically i want to maintain my body so that is why i can do that by doing gym also so you can add this point also yeah yeah okay yeah yeah sure yeah then uh, why do you want to join uh, merchant navy uh because i love to work with machines and by joining merchant navy i can implement the practical and knowledge that i have learned uh, in books uh, and uh, also the merchant navy gives me the uniform pride and daily challenges were there with lot of responsibilities and also it also gives me financial stability okay just one thing uh, you told that uh, you will apply practical knowledge okay you have to say you will apply theoretical knowledge the theoretical knowledge that you have gained yeah, you will be able to okay otherwise your answer was okay yeah yeah sorry yeah sorry sorry no problem <clears throat> what is the boiling point of your native place and uh, sea level over there so uh, uh, i live in gurugram the, the sea level uh, our uh, our region lies on the plateau we are above 500 and 700 above sea level so the boiling the boiling point will slightly reduce because of the low pressure but i don't know the exact value 
ओके गुड फेयर इनफ इज इट ओके या या ओके यू यू आर एडी लाइक यू कवर द पॉइंट दैट द ऑल्टीट्यूड इज हायर एज कम्पेयर टू सी लेवल सो दैट इज वाई प्रेशर विल बी स्लाइटली लोअर या दैट इज फाइन इवन इफ यू डोंट नो द बॉइलिंग पॉइंट लाइक बॉइलिंग पॉइंट ऑफ ऑर्डर इट इज ओके बट यू नो द कॉन्सेप्ट Who is the current minister in shipping? Uh, Subarananda Sonowal. Capital of Assam and Madhya Pradesh. Uh, capital of Assam is Dispur, and for Madhya Pradesh, it is Bhopal. Okay. What is the fire extinguisher and the different types of fire extinguishers used on board ship? So uh, basically, the fire extinguisher is used for uh, uh, extinguishing the fire that has occurred on board ship. there are different kinds of fire extinguisher like water fire extinguisher uh, sand extinguisher they foam extinguisher will be there this much i know only three okay so like there is uh, this thing co2 fire extinguisher carbon dioxide okay then there is dry chemical powder dcp fire extinguisher okay okay then uh, there is wet chemical uh, this thing powder wet chemical extinguisher and then the foam you told okay. water extinguisher you told okay uh, i have an answer i'll send it to you wait why does a ship float it's because of the uh, the ship has made uh, the ship has lower density than that of the water and also because of the archimedes principle as a body is partially or wholly immersed into a liquid Uh, the uh, the way uh, the volume of the liquid displaced will be equal to the buoyancy force. So because of that, the ship will float. Okay, so do any, do the density density thing? point that you said, na, that is little bit yeah. of little bit of vague point. Okay, that is uh, like if you th- think it uh, like deeply, then it is correct. But better you can better you can say like th- this that uh, since the like the the surface area of the ship. is very high so it displaces large amount of water okay and okay. this weight of the water and by archimedes principle uh, since it displaces large amount of water uh, so it is um, uh, it is it the buoyant force is able to balance the weight of the ship and this is how it floats okay so basically it displaces large amount of water and that is how density point is also there but uh, better is that there is large surface area so it displaces large amount of water that because it is spread na right hmm. okay okay fine what is 13% of 199 it's 25.6 25.5 okay okay i calculated okay okay so these numbers can vary sometimes they may yeah, they may yeah. ask some other question also so yeah, you yeah, try yeah. to this thing uh, do like uh, if this, it is asking 13% of 199 then you round off to 200 and then you calculate okay something yeah, yeah, sure, sure while working in team what do you like the most while working in team i try to uh, assist them and uh, like uh, i try to help them by whatever the thing that they are working in a team with i try to assist them as and do as much as possible i can contribute to the team okay what are different types of ships uh, the different types of ships are dry carrier bulk carrier container uh, roro vessel and L- lng carrier cruise ship ओके हाउ डज अ शिप मूव इट्स बिकॉज ऑफ द न्यूटन थॉट लॉ ऑफ मोशन एज द प्रोपेलर रोटेट्स द वाटर विल बी पुश बैकवर्ड्स एंड बिकॉज ऑफ द रिएक्शन फोर्स द शिप विल मूव फॉरवर्ड इन द फॉरवर्ड डायरेक्शन ओके फाइन इज इट ओके या इट इज फाइन maybe if he wants to like if he wants to cross question more then he will ask then uh, how this propeller rotates then you can say that it is directly coupled with the uh, main engine uh, yeah okay <coughs> how does the ship turn uh, it's because of the rudder there is a rudder present uh, after the propeller as uh, as we move the rudder left and right it will help to turn the ship 
okay what is the left side of the ship called what is the right side of the ship port called side. okay left side is port uh, side left is port side uh, and starboard side then no, no left is port side right port side yeah. left left is port yeah. side right is starboard side starboard side what is the spelling of rudder r u w d e r why sky appears blue is because of this scattering phenomena uh, the human eye is visible to uh, with a with a range of visible light only and because of the uh, the blue light has more scattering than the other light so we uh, the sky appears as a blue in color why does it have more scattering why does the blue light has more scattering because i think it has less wavelength i don't know i am guessing yeah it is le- it yeah i guess it is less wavelength only because it has less wavelength yeah less wavelength no <laughs> it is because sh- that because of that reason only one like a red light has a more wavelength that is why it is able to like uh, long travel longer distance that is why red light is used in headlight uh, this thing uh signals and all oh. yeah 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 blue color has minimum uh, wavelength yes less wavelength yeah. that is why okay then there is one more one more question why does the sky appear uh, reddish during the evening you can read about that also okay might ask that question also because yeah. this question sure. is asked. which sea is near daman uh, arabian sea okay how a bill pa- how a bill is passed in parliament that i don't know okay even i don't know <laughs> you, you because it is asked you see you read that yeah i will definitely go okay okay five ports in south america that also that also i missed it. i don't know okay okay uh, can you tell me about your uh, final year project yeah uh, in uh, my in my engineering i have done a final year project on uh, arduino based automatic sorting machine based on optical sensor should i explain yeah you should you should explain uh, like while explaining your final project your title then what was its objective okay objective of your project based on arduino based optical sensor uh, sorting machine based on optical sensor the main objective of this project is to uh, sort different components based on size color and shapes like there are different components uh, uh, that has been manufactured in industry so we need to sort out, uh, all these components uh, based on the size shape so uh, our project was to uh, sort the different components okay and uh, how do how like how it, did you achieve it how were you able to do that using sensors yeah there is an uh, there is an optical sensor which uh, visualizes the object based on its color or size so based on that there is a arm fitted over our project which is used to separate these components uh, like there is a conveyor belt over uh, on which the object is moving and with the help of an arm it will uh, separate all these components okay so like uh, the conveyor belt like uh, which type of motor did you use to drive the conveyor belt uh, the a uh, small motor will be the dc motor okay dc motor so it was not like a stepper motor or something like that it, it will uh, it will come in front of the arm then it will stop so it is continuously rotating the no. conveyor belt yeah it, 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 it is continuously rotating okay okay so did you like build it also or it was like it was just conceptualized no no we have built it okay okay so did it work successfully yeah it it was it worked successfully okay 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 fine Like what was the size of the this thing uh, 
like uh, battery use which battery did you use to like uh, run the conveyor motor uh, we actually uh, use the 12 volt battery and another there is a plug which is which can directly connected to the switch there is a plug also okay okay so we'll uh, move on to technical now Can you tell me about uh, the classification of pumps? So basically, the pumps are classified into two types: rotodynamic and positive displacement. Positive displacement pump. Rotodynamic pumps are again classified as two types: centrifugal pump and uh, axial flow pumps. And here, positive displacement pumps are also divided into two types: reciprocating pumps and rot uh, rotary pumps. Reciprocating pumps are divided as diaphragm pump and piston pump. And uh, piston pumps are again classified as single acting and double acting. Rotary pumps are classified as gear pump, screw pump, low pump, and vane pump. Okay, it was okay. Nice. Uh, this thing. Uh, can you give me an example of uh, diaphragm pump? Uh, Welden pump. Okay, Welden pump. Okay, and uh, I hope if you are mentioning about this thing, uh, low pump and yeah. vane pump. so whenever you mention that you so expect be ready for cross questions he may interviewer may ask what is this thing okay so you know how they work okay yeah yeah i know okay fine then otherwise if you are, if you don't know then you don't say about that okay 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 difference between a centrifugal pump and a reciprocating pump Yeah, and the centrifugal pump works on the principle of rotodynamic, and piston pump, uh, reciprocating pump, uh, work on the principle of reverse piston movement. In centrifugal pump, priming is required. In reciprocating pump, priming is not required. Centrifugal pump will use for high discharge and low pressure, and reciprocating pump is used for high pressure and low discharge. In centrifugal pump, uh, the impeller is used to cause the uh, movement of the water or displacing the water, and here in A reciprocating pump. The pistons are responsible for displacing the water. Uh, centrifugal pump are uh, centrifugal pump. Uh, we do not require relief valve, uh, and in reciprocating pump we require a relief valve. Uh, centrifugal pump are uh, simple and easy to maintain. Reciprocating pumps are slightly complex. Yeah, that's it. Should I need to add more things? Okay, you can add uh, like one more point that uh, this thing. uh air vessels the the discharge is continuous in case of a uh, this thing uh centrifugal pump whereas it is not the case in in a reciprocating pump that is why an air vessel is required in a reciprocating pump but it is not required in a centrifugal pump okay, okay. then other thing you told that uh, this thing reciprocating pump works on reverse piston movement principle okay so yeah. i have also tried to search but i could not find that uh, reverse piston movement principle okay 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 so maybe you can say that uh, it uses to and fro movement of the piston okay it yeah. traps the fluid and uh, the to and fro movement of the piston causes this thing okay because you check check that river about reverse uh, piston principle yeah then you have covered most of the points yeah your answer was good okay uh, so how how far uh, can a centrifugal pump lift water uh i think it, it depends upon the uh, temperature and pressure of the uh, temperature of the fluid and uh, working pressure like vapor pressure uh, normally like uh, for cold water the lift can be goes up to 10.3 meter ideally but uh, uh, due to some uh, losses it is it is lift can lift up to 7 to 8 meters how did you come to this figure of 10.3 meter uh, uh And the reverse package, I think, Pranit Mathur sir told. No, no, no. As you don't see in the, I'm as an interviewer, I'm asking. No, no. Acha, as an interviewer. You do. You can't say in interview about the reverse package and Pranit Mathur sir. Okay. What should I say? So basically, 10.3 meter. You said it is correct. Okay. Ideally, it can, it will go till 10.3. So how does 10.3 meter come? Due to perfect vacuum. Okay. We assume that perfect vacuum is created 
so uh, per, by if a perfect vacuum is created then uh, that will that is correspondent to 10.3 meters of water column okay yeah yeah then other points you said it was right you said about temperature yeah it is dependent on temperature and everything because of then vapor pressure yeah that was right yeah What is a positive displacement pump? Uh, a positive displacement pump is a pump which is used for uh, a high pressure, high pressure and low pressure uh, low discharge. Generally, it works on the positive displacement principle. Uh, the example for positive displacement may be gear pump. Okay. Here, uh, okay. here you said these things. Okay, but here I think so. You are expected to say that positive displacement pump is a pump which. positively traps a fixed quantity of fluid and uh, and displaces it from the suction to a suction to the discharge okay like it, you have to say about like it traps the fluid okay and then it displaces positively displaces example and all is okay you have to say that this also can you explain the working of uh, uh, like the components and working of a centrifugal pump Uh, first, I will uh, tell the components of a centrifugal pump. Then I'll explain the centrifugal pump. Uh, the components of centrifugal pump are generally uh, a non-return footer wall will be there, and there is a suction side, impeller eye, impeller casing, impeller blades, and impeller and a uh, uh, volute casing, and a discharge side. The discharge will be there. Uh, coming to the working principle, as uh, whenever when we start the motor, the impeller will rotate. and due to which the centrifugal force is imparted on the fluid which pushes the liquid uh, pushes the water really outwards so there is a vacuum or empty space is created at the impeller eye due to which suction pressure is created and thus the fluid from the suction side will be uh, sucked into the impeller casing and will be discharged towards the uh, discharge side the volute casing is designed in such a way that the area of the volute casing increases due to which the pressure is going to generate and kinetic uh, energy of the water molecules will decreases and thus the pressure is generated at the discharge side of the centrifugal pump okay fair enough it was uh, nice just i i would like to give a little bit of feedback on that <coughs> uh, the, when you said about the components so uh, yeah. like one part you missed i guess strainer you didn't tell okay and uh, uh, sorry, sorry, yeah, strainer so uh, this is this way is nice you try to follow the path of the fluid and you that way you will remember all the parts so that you did right okay so one strainer you yeah. forgot and then uh, it's not footer valve it's foot valve okay and um, foot valve yeah and uh, this was that i can i can say non return valve also yeah you can say non return valve also it's it's a non return valve only yeah okay yeah then uh, then other than that then you told okay suction happens in suction ha ah, suction part was okay suction part was right uh, during discharge okay so during discharge you said uh, that uh, area of the casing increases the area of the in casing increases but uh, it's safe to safer to say the volume of the casing increases towards the discharge okay okay yeah Fine. that was one point and um, then volume and one more thing yeah you you said that uh, this thing kinetic energy because the area is increasing the then the kinetic energy decreases and by bernoulli's principle mention about bernoulli's principle by bernoulli's principle uh, as the kinetic energy okay, decreases pressure energy increases and this is how the discharge pressure is created okay uh, otherwise your answer was okay but just little bit point, points to improve your answer is good just you can improve it a little bit yeah yeah <coughs> uh Which device is used to protect uh, positive displacement pump from damage? Uh, a relief valve will be there. Okay. Can you explain? Which, uh, which releases excessive pressure. 
uh, that has uh, if uh, when the pump uh, develop uh, the more pressure than the as uh, limiting value then it will act on the relief valve and the relief valve will release the excessive pressure and, and the pressure will drop down to the safe value can you can you give me a situation where the pressure increases like uh, when the discharge valve of the uh, positive displacement uh, is shut due to which the pressure rises in the pump so where where the relief valve comes into picture okay is a relief valve required in a centrifugal pump no no in centrifugal pump we don't require a uh, relief valve because the casing and the pipes that are designed such a way that it can handle the pressure and also the second point is that a centrifugal pump does not create that much of pressure as compared to a positive displacement pump yeah okay you can add one more point that whatever pressure that is developed na in a centrifugal pump corresponding to zero discharge you remember na the curve uh this yeah, thing yeah. had so uh, the, uh, to uh, corresponding to zero discharge maximum pressure maximum head is developed and that head is not increasing nature is increasing in nature as in case of a positive displacement pump if we close the discharge will keep on happening no matter if we close the valve so the pressure keeps on increasing in a positive displacement pump but that is not the case in as in case of a centrifugal pump whatever pressure is there that is maximum pressure and the um, that you said it was correct that uh, the casing and all is designed in such a way that it is able to sustain much higher pressure than this okay so yeah so yeah. your answer was right okay. what is water hammering Uh, basically water hammering uh, is a phenomena in which uh, whenever the water is flowing inside the pipe it has a uh, higher kinetic energy and due to some bends occurring and there is a uh, so restrictions to flow due to which the kinetic energy of the water will convert into the potential energy due to which uh, an explosion or blast can happens in the pipe so basically this is water hammering Uh, potential energy i am not sure about it uh, that it is converted into potential energy so hammering is there na no? sound energy will be there okay maybe i will check for it yeah I'll you will check for it. it yeah yeah so it can happen due to various reasons then if you suddenly close the valve so then the water keeps on like moving back uh, back and forth back and forth okay so that way it keeps okay. on hammering that is water hammering you read about that okay. what is uh, priming priming is basically a removing of the air or gases uh, from the centrifugal mm-hmm. pump Uh, it is done basically by adding a non-return wall at the suction side. Uh, if the air or water molecules, uh, w- uh, gas molecules, enter the centrifugal pump, it cannot uh, uh, create uh, that much of pressure because the density of air is a slight a thousand times less than the water. So the pump will dry run, and that can cause uh, heating and damaging damage the winding. So that's why priming is the uh, priming in is required in centrifugal pump. Okay. and uh, like uh, what are the priming methods uh, i think there is a, a manual priming method and uh, i think i forgot vacuum priming so one is manual uh, yeah vacuum priming vacuum priming a pump from pump priming a uh, external external pump priming basically vacuum pump is an external yeah. pump na Okay. okay. I'll send the this thing to you. Wait. Okay. <clears throat> What is uh, cavitation and uh, how to avoid it? Cavitation is generally uh, formation of uh, vapors inside the casing. Uh, it can be avoided by uh, making the net positive suction height available greater than the requirement. Okay. Okay. You condition the condition you said it was okay, but you did not explain cavitation fully. Explain it fully. Cavitation. What is cavitation? You just said the formation of vapor bubbles. 
okay the basically the cavitation forms whenever the uh, pressure uh, whenever the pressure uh, the vapor pressure uh, is much higher than the suction pressure due to which formation of uh, vapors takes place and this can cause a pitting on the impeller blades and uh, uh, noise and vibrations can also occur which can damage the pump okay how pitting will occur uh, when the, these uh, generally when the water molecules entering into the casing it got higher uh, kinetic energy and when when it hits the impeller blades it will uh, chips chip off the uh, materials on the impeller which which is called pitting okay so like you didn't say yeah. that uh, the, when the, like when these vapor bubbles so these when these vapor bubbles are formed when they reach high pressure region so they collapse and they cause like impinging or pitting action okay because of the collapsing the vapor bubbles are formed and then suddenly they are converted into uh, water when they enter high pressure region okay so that you read about cavitation again okay okay How does an external gear pump work? The external gear pumps like uh, it consists of two gears. One gear is a follower gear, and another gear is the driver gear. So uh, these gears are meshed together. When these gears are driven by the motor, the gears uh, at the suction side, the gears are opening due to which the volume increases, the pressure is going to reduce, and thus the suction fluid is created, uh, which is sucks the liquid inside the pump. Uh, the liquid uh, will uh, uh, travel along with the gaps that are present between the tips to the discharge side and at the discharge side the uh, volume decreases due to which the pressure is going to increase and thus the pressure is created at the discharge side and how the uh, this is how the fluid will be uh, pumped towards the discharge side that's it do i need to more some, say something so just a little bit of tweaks in the words that you are saying uh what did you say then uh, when uh, this thing uh, about how suction is created uh because of the uh, the gears are opening the ah, okay so you are na instead of saying gears are opening na so you can say the gears come out of mesh on the suction side okay come out okay. they are coming out of mesh na yeah, yeah. O- opening is not a little technical word, word so you can say they come out of mesh due to which uh, the this thing volume increase volume increases and there is that that you said it was right okay and on the discharge then okay. you can say that the 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 fluid is trapped bit in the cavities between the this thing casing and the teeth that also you said and it is moved along the casing towards the discharge side okay that is also and how on the discharge side what happens uh, as the gears are meshing coming uh, meshing together the volume uh, the de- increases this is then the pressure will increase yes yeah come into mesh just remember you say meshing okay 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 and uh, you uh, in in gims is it the are like the diagrams and all are asked like uh, draw, draw the diagram for a centrifugal pump draw the diagram for external gear pump for vcrs all yeah yeah they i think they last okay okay they'll, so they'll i say, hope you are practicing that also the, uh, pump. Yeah, yeah, practicing. Okay, so can you draw? Can you bring th- this thing a little closer? I didn't mention the parts. Uh, yeah, you have to mention that. Uh, yeah. So, so you just check the diagram in Ashish then PDF and all. Okay. For my friend, search Dreamers package, you will get it. so what parts yeah, yeah. Uh, everything you need to mention suction discharge then like follower driver then yeah. this thing yeah. fine fine clearance what the that what is there okay okay all that okay. you need to you need to uh, can you draw the direction of the this thing pump a direction of the rotation of the gears yeah yeah Okay, fine. 
why the discharge valve is uh, closed during the starting of a centrifugal pump uh, at, at the beginning the discharge valve is closed because <coughs> uh, if we uh, if you open the discharge valve the we need more flow the, the the current drawn by the motor will be increased so it can cause the heating in the uh, windings of the pump so which can damage the pump so that's why we keep the discharge valve shut after uh, developing some pressure we can open the discharge valve later okay uh, you didn't mention that the since uh, this point was right that if because discharge is more so then current draw will be more okay but one more point is there important point that um, uh, because the because the shaft we are starting the this thing pump from rest so it, it will have to overcome the inertia okay to attain the required speed and all that okay so for that also some amount of current is required at the start of the this thing pump okay. and apart from this as the discharge increases the this thing current draw also increases so in addition to that this will also be there so if we eliminate this additional part of uh, like discharge so then current drawn will be lesser okay, okay. so whenever you are asked then you can say sir uh, there are two reasons one is uh, we want to uh, we want to reduce the power consumption and uh, second point is to um, to protect the motor windings okay and then you can explain these two points in details okay okay fine yeah what is an eductor or ejector pump uh, eductor and ejector pump are basically jet pump uh, which uses uh, water or liquid to, to create a uh, to uh, generate a pump in action how can you elaborate uh, basically uh, we, we use this in fresh water generator so uh, ejector pump is used for uh, pumping gas and ejector pump is used for a uh, liquid uh, so when the ejector is uh, is like a nozzle when the water is flowing to, to through this nozzle uh, the vela the pressure is going to reduce because of the high velocity so there is a, a ejector will be uh, so like perpendicular to it so uh, like it will suck the air from it and allow the uh, air to get empty in the fresh water generator so this is how the vacuum created with the help of a uh, uh, eductor and ejector pump is basically component okay difference between petrol and diesel engine uh, petrol engine works on auto cycle and diesel engine works on diesel cycle the compression ratio for petrol engine is 8 to 10 and compression ratio for diesel engine is 18 to 20 uh, in petrol engine we use uh, air plus fuel mixture in into the combustion chamber whereas in diesel engine we use only air uh, uh, so is only air allowed into the combustion chamber in petrol engine we use spark ignition uh, whereas in diesel engine we use compression ignition uh, petrol engines are uh, for same compression ratio petrol engines are highly efficient and for diesel engines are less efficient petrol engines are less noisy and uh, diesel engines are more noisy that's it okay you can uh, for same compression ratio you point said you said the point that is okay but you need to say you, you should also say that uh, since the compression ratio is higher in case of uh, this thing diesel engine. diesel engine so there are more they are more efficient and uh, like yeah. if you can tell about the values of compression ratio it brings about some credibility so you can also say that that compression ratio in case of a what what is it in the case of a percent is this thing diesel and si uh, si engine uh, in si engine it is 8 to 10 and in diesel engine is 18 to 20 okay what is a choke valve so basically uh, it's a control valve which is used to regulate the flow and uh, control the pressure it is uh, fitted uh, uh, i think it is fitted in uh, the petrol engines like before the carburetor hmm. yeah i know this much only do you ride a bike yeah i ride a bike 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 may you have seen choke valve have you ever used choke yeah, yeah I, I use the choke choke valve when do you use it when, when whenever we i, I was uh, uh, like low in fuel okay so like basically choke valve is used uh, when like uh, this thing during cold start in cold weather and all so what happens choke valve uh, we cho 
whenever we pull the choke valve na so what happens the yeah. the pa- passage is like restricted it is like closed and very less amount of air is made to pass through the this thing inlet manifold so what it does that since the pa- like less pa- less area is there for passing so the there is increase in air velocity and due to increase in air velocity more pressure drop takes place at the this thing throat of the venturi and uh, okay. that is why more of uh, more fuel is sucked from the this thing fuel tank of the carburetor does that so that is how choke valve so basically choke valve is used during cold startups okay you you read more about it that okay 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 what is a carburetor carburetor is a component which is used in petrol engine for proper uh, supplying of air and fuel mixture into the uh, engine okay and how does it work how does it work uh, that i that I, i don't know i i need to go look at it look okay. at it okay look look at it okay fine list the components of a diesel engine Uh, the components of diesel engines are first one the there is a cylinder liner will be there piston piston rod uh, crosshead bearing connecting rod crankshaft and cil- uh, cylinder as in cylinder head assembly will be there rocker arm assembly will be there in uh, uh, and wo- uh, inlet and exhaust valve will be there in two two stroke there is a scavenge port no inlet valve will be there and fuel injector will be there and uh, there is a bed plate and tabulator a frame <coughs> uh indicator cock piston rings uh yeah okay i would suggest don't go with high fi parts normal in the parts which we have learned in mechanical engineering and all that that is okay okay so you said cross head bearing so then he will ask you what is a cross head bearing okay normally as mechanical engineers we come so in 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 gims is it is it exp- they do they ask questions on marine parts more no no they ask in general in general, general no? they ask ah so then don't uh, don't talk about uh, entablature a frame and all okay then immediately he will re- re- uh, he will mm-hmm. not ask about other parts and what is a frame what is entablature and all that okay okay So simply you can say the the cylinder liner is there then piston is there piston rings are there gajian pin connecting rod uh, then uh, cylinder uh, cylinder head this thing inlet valves exhaust valves and a fuel injector rocker arm camshaft crankshaft okay so it's a basic simple parts you say okay okay fine because because if you say some this thing na compli- uh, you know it is good but if you say then uh, they will uh, uh, not focus on other parts and ask you about this okay try to be as simple as possible yeah yeah can you explain the working of a four stroke diesel engine yeah in four stroke diesel engine basically the cycle is completed in four stroke and for every four stroke there is one uh, power stroke uh, the cycle that is completed is for the first one is the suction and second one is the compression and third one is the power stroke and the fourth one is the exhaust stroke uh, with the help of uh, inlet valve the air will, the air air fuel mixture air from the air is allowed to enter into the engine cylinder and it is been compressed uh, to uh, compress from the piston is moved from bottom dead center to the top dead center after the air is compressed the fuel injection will takes place and due to this injection the combustion takes place and explosion happens due to which power stroke will be generated and after power stroke after combustion all all the gases will be released through the exhaust valve and this is how the four stroke engine works yeah during the exhaust stroke right? yeah okay so like uh, this thing uh, you, when you said about uh, this thing na power stroke so the yeah. after compression the expansion you can also add one more point that uh, the temperature is uh, high enough so that uh, the self ignition of the uh, fuel takes place in diesel yeah yeah okay okay other than that yeah it was okay
What is ideal gas uh, equation? Ideal gas equation is PV is equal to nRT. Okay. What is a turbocharger in its uh, working? So basically, a turbocharger is a component that is fitted for supplying a more amount of air into the combustion chamber. Uh, the turbocharger works in such a way that when the exhaust gases are uh, uh, produced inside the combustion chamber, these exhaust gases are uh, allowed to pass through the exhaust manifold to the uh, turbocharger. The turbocharger consists of a turbine. The, these gases will rotate the turbine of a turbocharger. And also the turbine is directly connected to the uh, blower will be there in parallel this blower will also rotate as the turbine rotates uh, this uh, blower is uh, will suck the air from the surroundings and uh, it is being passed uh, through the air cooler where it, uh, the temperature of this uh, uh, air will be lowered and it will be allowed to pass through the inlet of the uh, engine so that maximum amount of air can be entered into the cylinder for combustion purpose okay till this thing last part the uh, you said correctly mostly it was correct only just in the end uh, mention that it is compressed and density of air increases okay yeah uh, you directly went to intercooler sorry air cooler directly went to the air, cool, air cooler you directly went to the air cooler so you have to say that density yeah. it is compressed and density of air increases then uh, since there is compression the temperature also increases to decrease this temperature we use uh, the air cooler okay okay sure yeah and then uh, we send it to uh, this thing as you told to the engine cylinder mm -hmm. difference between two stroke and four stroke yeah. Uh, in two stroke, the cycle is completed in two stroke, and in four stroke, the cycle is completed in four stroke. Uh, the power developed by the two stroke is 1.5 to 2 times more than the four stroke. Uh, in two stroke, there is a smaller flywheel is required. In four stroke, there is larger flywheel is required. Uh, the volumetric efficiency of two stroke is less, and volumetric efficiency of four, four stroke is more. Uh, uh, fuel consumption for two stroke is more, and fuel consumption for four stroke is less. Efficiency of uh, uh, Efficiency of uh, two stroke is uh, less and efficiency of four stroke is higher. And high power to weight ratio in two stroke, high power uh, less power to weight ratio in four stroke. Um, yeah. Uh, Lubal cost in two stroke is less and lubal cost in four stroke is more. Why? Because we use because we use more uh, good quality of fuel in four stroke as compared to two stroke. Fuel. Good quality of fuel used in four stroke. I thought you will say about uh, this thing. Let's say uh, separate oils, uh, T high TB and oil is used and all. Okay, I I I'll send you this thing, two stroke versus four okay. stroke ka answer. Me, your answer need to be in a little structured way because uh, you, normally whenever you answer the points of differences, na your answer should always go from simpler points. Whatever simpler points are there, first you say that and then the level of complexity increases okay so th this is what happens then then the interviewer will not cross question you or halt you in between and ask something okay okay so you did not mention about all these points that uh, uh, this thing there is a uh, one power stroke i think so you did not tell now one power stroke is there in one revolution of the crankshaft into four stroke there is uh, one uh, power stroke in uh, uh, this thing two revolutions of the crankshaft did you say no, no, I didn't say. No, those are important points. You should just say that. Yeah. Then, then crankshaft, camshaft run at the same speed. Ratio. All that. So yeah, I'll send. I'll, I'll send this thing. Camshaft and crankshaft. Is the supercharger uh, directly uh, coupled to the engine? Yeah, it is directly connected to the crankshaft. Okay. What is pre-ignition? Pre-ignition is generally a process uh, uh, in which uh, the ignition of the fuel take, takes place early before the spark is introduced into the, the cylinder because of the hot uh, surface of the cylinder liner and piston. Okay. Of the air fuel mixture, you said air, uh, ignition of the air. Uh, air, air fuel mixture. Ah, air fuel mixture, okay. 
air will cannot air can yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I i i think so, I, I, I think so i, I must have misheard I, i thought you just said air what is a piston ring in gaussian pin uh, what is the function of piston general, rings for sure yeah piston ring is generally mounted on the top of the crown, uh, top of the piston at the uh, piston crown it is generally made up of the caster and alloy Uh, piston is responsible for uh, having a seal and the leak proof uh, in the combustion chamber so that the gases cannot be leaked out and it also helps to increase the rate of heat transfer from the piston to the cylinder liner and the next question the next one we ask okay the next point is gaussian pin what is gaussian pin the gaussian pin is connected to uh, the, the gaussian pin is responsible for connecting the piston to the connecting rod piston to the connecting rod okay What is swept volume and what is clearance volume? Uh, sw- uh, swept volume is the uh, when the piston moves to, to the bottom that center the volume in the cylinder like combustion chamber is the swept volume and the clearance volume is the when the piston moves to the top dead center the volume is the clearance volume. From the it moves from the top dead center or when it is at the top dead center it is uh, the clearance volume. The at the top dead center when okay. the piston is at the top dead center the volume is the clearance volume. And, and what is swept the, volume? This, piston is at the bottom dead center the volume of this uh, this combustion chamber or the cylinder will is the swept volume okay that is the uh, that is the total volume swept volume is the volume swept by the piston between the top dead center and the bottom dead center okay How is piston cooled? Uh, generally, piston is cooled with the help of uh, oil that has been passed through the uh, this. Um, you are actually asking about main engine. Yeah, so yeah, you. Yeah, you said you tell me both. Okay, I know two two stroke main engine, marine engine. Okay. So basically, with with the help of a telescopic pipe, uh, the oil has been passed through the cross-head bearing where it goes to the piston and it cools the piston and comes back to the. in case okay and uh, this thing uh, about um, four stroke i'm saying in in four stroke uh, uh, it is a splash a splash lubrication is takes takes place and due to which the cooling of the piston takes place splash lubrication is for the cooling of the liner liner so for piston what is it so like there are uh, passages in the this thing your crank crank shaft so through the crank shaft then it goes to the this thing uh, crank pin and then from the connecting rod then it goes to the this thing your uh, piston okay. okay you must have seen in the dreamers package i guess yeah i'll send i'll send this thing to you what is the flywheel and its purpose generally flywheel is uh, attached to the crankshaft it is used for uh, storing the energy during the power stroke and supply the uh, torque uh, to, uh, during the non power stroke or ideal stroke okay what is a cross head bearing where is it located and why is it required the cross head bearing is generally a, is a, in between the piston rod and the connecting rod uh, it consists of a cross head bearing in a two stroke engine the cross head, yeah two stroke um, two stroke engine uh, it, it is used for uh, absorbing the axial thrust that is generated due to the rotation of the connecting rod uh, it also helps in uh, reducing the length of the piston rod uh, connecting rod uh, and also helps in reducing the size of the engine okay Uh, it is not used to first of all it is not used to this axial thrust because you see radial thrust is there suppose if the the stroke length and stroke length is very large and if you are using a connecting rod this thing normal yeah. uh, oh, connecting actually, rod in gaussian side thrust i think yeah side thrust or radial uh, sorry right not radial thrust side thrust it is not axial right, thrust yeah. yeah 
you said axial thrust so you should say side thrust okay and that's because the this thing more of the more this thing floor space will be required okay yeah so one reason is that it reduces the size second point is that it, uh, this thing um, it uh, reduces the side thrust okay yeah yeah what is piston cut piston cut is the lower part of the piston it is connected to the piston rod okay and what what is its purpose i don't know the purpose can you tell me yeah so it uh, like uh, absorbs the side thrust okay the side thrust which is coming na because of this thing yeah because yeah. of the rotation of the crankshaft that what is uh, scavenging and uh, its uh, types scavenging is a process of uh, removal of the exhaust gases from the combustion chamber and the entry of fresh air into the combustion chamber uh, uh, the uh, types of scavenging you ask yes yes this yeah, no this is also what is scavenging also i asked okay that was right now go ahead uh, types of scavengings are the first one is the uni flow scavenging and second one is the loop flow scavenging and third third is the cross flow scavenging okay can you explain about all of them yeah in uh, in generally in uni flow scavenging uh, the flow of uh, uh, the flow of air is in the uni flow uh, can i draw and explain fine yeah draw you can draw and explain. okay fine and which one is the best and uniflow is the best because it has maximum uh, efficiency or scavenging okay you are correct okay what is the camshaft generally camshaft is uh, uh, connected to the crankshaft which is uh, used for uh, camshaft is connected to crankshaft okay go ahead camshaft is connected to crankshaft and generally it is it consists of a cams which is used for a, a proper opening and closing of the uh, valves uh, with the help of a rocker arm assembly okay what is a push rod uh, a push rod the push rod is uh, generally uh, in between the cam uh, cam shaft and the fulcrum of the rocker arm assembly which is responsible for uh, moving uh, up and down of the fulcrum of the rocker arm so that the wall can be open or closed what is tapet clearance yeah Tapet clearance is the small gap provided between the wall stem and the rocker arm. Uh, generally, this is uh, uh, tapet clearance uh, is responsible for proper uh, like opening and closing of the uh, inlet and wall. Uh, if uh, because of the thermal stresses, uh, the exhaust uh, the, because of the thermal stresses, uh, it uh, there is thermal a chance expansion. of uh, thermal expansion. Uh, the there is a chance of uh, 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 change in dimension of the rocker arm assembly will take place due to which of the wall stem. Uh, of the wall stem takes place due to which uh, the uh, uh, delay in opening and closing of the wall takes place so to prevent that we generally provide tapet clearance okay and how the tapet clearance is measured with the help of a feeler gauge okay what is uh, uh, this thing uh, atomization uh, atomization is the uh, is a phenomena in which uh, the uh, fuel particles are small uh, are uh, spread into the small uh, the fuel particles are like uh, spread into the combustion chamber with the small fine particles so that uh, the proper combustion takes place okay with the they are distributed fuel nozzle yeah so they are they are they are made to in small particles so that the surface area increases and proper combustion takes place combustion takes yeah can you give me the classification of uh, ic engines yeah 
basically uh, the classification of ic engines are the first one is the uh, based on the stroke two stroke and four stroke uh, based on the uh, air supply that is uh, naturally aspirated or supercharged uh, based on the number of cylinder uh, single cylinder and multi cylinder the based on the combustion spark ignition and combustion compression ignition and based on the uh, shape of the uh, like movement of the piston w shape x shape and v shape and there are uh, based on the speed low speed medium speed high speed reversible and irreversible engine trunk type and cross set type and based on the fuels as well uh, petrol engine diesel engine uh, gas and mixed mixed fuel okay fine okay so abdul your i felt your interview work was good you are well prepared okay yeah, yeah. Mm. You must, you must be feeling confident na after this giving a mock interview yeah 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 so yeah carry on just uh, just uh, two a few things that i asked about on um, the things which i asked you to focus and mostly cover all the questions in this this pdf na so you will be good to go yeah, yeah sure yeah. best of luck yeah thanks okay